I want to make just one point, okay? And that is that principles matter. Okay? Social organizing principles matter. <clears throat> they matter to maintain the status quo, and they matter to affect fundamental change. Okay? The current principles that sustain our current order, namely endless growth, efficiency, consumer sovereignty with its insatiability uh, component are not up to the task. So we need new principles, principles that are consonant with the very nature of the crisis. Consider these three scenarios. Now, if you've been up to Maine, you might have seen a, a, a situation like this. But what's happening here is this, this lobster catcher had worked very hard, over months possibly, under very dangerous conditions to get that trap out in the water, leave it there for a few days, and pull it back up, along with about maybe four or five or six hundred other traps. And he got, it, got that trap. Oh, and I should also explain that if it was a typical day, it would be blowing wind, cloudy, and maybe snowing. Okay, this is the middle of the winter. When they, when they fish, so it's dangerous. So he goes to all that work and all that danger, pulls up the trap, pulls out, uh, uh, opens it up and pulls out a, a lobster and throws the lobster back. It might have, been, might have been too small or too large, or it might have been an egg-bearing female. But it's largely due to what collectivities of fishermen and uh, fishing uh, uh, officials have done over the years in Maine. That is, they have decided that it makes sense not to take every last lobster. It makes sense to restrain their har harvest because in the long run, they all do better. Okay. And on this particular island, they also decided that if they st stop fishing for six months a year, they do better. The lobsters do better and the fisher folk do better. And they also figured out that if they only put out a limited number of traps, they get sort of, uh, they wouldn't harvest, they wouldn't, they wouldn't risk over harvesting, so they build in sort of a buffer to that harvesting. Okay. <clears throat> so, restraint, respite, some downtime in the season, buffer, I, I see these as operational principles under the larger principle of sufficiency doing well, and let me emphasize, doing well, this is a very healthy fishery, doing well by doing less than the most possible. Okay. Second scenario, imagine you were given charge of, let's say, a dozen children, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 13-year-olds, okay, for an afternoon. You say, just go out and play. Just, you know, the, the park is yours. Do whatever you want. Studies have shown the children will spend up to 40% of their time arguing about the rules when they're playing. And when they start arguing about which rules are the right rules, that's not fair, you can't do that. Well, we didn't do it that way before. Or if you have the base way out there, it takes too much time and so on. When they start arguing about that, they are in a sense creating principles, overarching norms about what, what those rules are going to be. The point here is that it is very human to set rules and to establish principles of social organization. We, we are social creatures. We cannot help but do that. Third scenario is called international trade. For a long time, what this meant was that a country would build up its power by erecting trade barriers, protecting its domestic industry, exporting selectively to particular trading partners, and keeping out others' goods, others goods from, the, uh, from their, their country, protecting their domestic industry. That was the game. And apparently it worked on its own terms for quite a while, at least for those who won the game, until it all came crashing down in the Great Depression and World War II. And towards the end of World War II, some policymakers, economists, and others got together in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, and they said, basically, we can't let this happen again. We've got to do something different. We have to write different rules. 
And they figured out very quickly that it wasn't, just enough, it wasn't enough to just write the rules, but they had to establish the principles that over, was overarching those rules. And they landed on three principles. Now, as I go through these, notice how these principles relate to the very nature of the crisis that they faced at that time. The first was liberalization, bring down those trade barriers. That was a major cause of the Great Depression. The next is uh, non-discrimination. If you're going to trade with one country, you trade with everybody. No special deals. Another major cause. And if there's going to be exceptions to these first two, then we'll do it through multilateral agreements. Multilateralism, multilateralism was the third principle. Okay. Those three principles basically have governed our, the global trade regime for a, a good half century to, to this day. And on its own terms, has been very effective. And the reason is because those principles fit the nature of the crisis that they faced back then. We have a different crisis now. We need new principles. Uh, what, are the, what, what, what are the principles that we need? What are the principles that govern the current uh, economic order? And are they up to the task? As I see it, we have an economic system, a system of material and energy flow that is supremely well organized. Now notice when I say organized, it immediately implies principles. Okay? We have an economy su supremely well organized to extract raw materials rapidly and thoroughly hence the efficiency principle, to convert those materials to products that people will buy, and notice that's different than what people need, 1.2 billion people do need fresh water and can't buy it. And this principle, underlying principle here is, is consumer sovereignty or consumer demand. And this material system is supremely well organized to create markets everywhere and open up new markets, hence the growth principle, and to dispose of the waste in the least costly, least visible manner possible. Efficiency again, and the out of sight, out of mind principle. And it's well organized to do all of this more and more, faster and faster, making good time, and uh, cheaper and cheaper. Right? Again, growth, efficiency, cheaper is better principles. Okay. Seems to me these are the very principles that got us into the current crisis. And it defies all logic to say that we can use the same principles to get us out of this crisis, to do virtually just the opposite of what has, has occurred over the past century or two, however you want to count. And yet we keep hearing uh, claims, one, one way, uh, assertions of, of one sort or another, We've got to grow our, grow our economy, but with green products. We've got to pollute, I always do pollute, but we do it more efficiently. And after all, consumers are buying it all, so that's what they want. Okay? I think we need a new logic, and we need some new principles. There's nothing natural or inevitable. They haven't been around forever growth, efficiency, consumer sovereignty, and so on, insatiability, and so forth. And because they've been constructed, we can reconstruct them, we can deconstruct them, we can destroy them and put up new ones. Where we get those principles, seems to me, is existing practice. I think I have the record for the fewest pictures, right? Seems to me that we can get principles from examples like this. Not only are they healthy now, in, in this, in this uh, uh, lobstering example, but they've been doing this for well over a hundred years. It seems to me that is a, makes it a reasonable candidate for sustainable practice. They're not perfect, but they've worked this out anyway, and they've done it for 100 years. Now, there's a little town in Spain that has uh, really uh, uh, um, arid conditions, highly variable water supply, and the irrigators, the farmers, have worked out a system for uh, allocating that water. And there's so many disputes over the water, they have a weekly tribunal to work out all the disputes. But the fact is, it's worked for 500 years that we can find the principles of sustainability to counter, as countervailing principles to the ones of the current uh, degrading, uh, ever-expanding uh, economic order. 
So what those principles might be? Well, we've heard, I'm sure everyone's heard about prevention and polluter pays and precaution, reverse onus. These are all important parts of it. Um, but it seems to me that we, in, in this society in particular, we need principles that deal with one of the defining characteristics of this culture, namely excess. And not just the existence of excess, but the very celebration of excess. Okay? We need countervailing principles for that. And maybe restraint, respite, buffering are possibilities for that, would have put, put under the rubric of sufficiency. Doing well by doing a little bit less than the most possible. 